When you think of Penticton, you probably reminisce about a city between two lakes in the middle of wine country. Beautiful beaches, water sports, outdoor adventure, with world-class rock climbing and cycling. A true four seasons paradise. Plus renowned for being the host community for so many festivals and events. Yet you undoubtedly will also reminisce about its rich hockey history. From the 1955 World Champion V's. The Okanagan Hockey School being the longest continuously running hockey school in the world the BC Hockey Hall of Fame and having one of this country's most storied junior hockey franchises. In this series, we will look at Penticton V's past, present and into the future and go behind the scenes as the current BCHL champions fight to defend their title. This one's for you, Penticton. The V's are 2022 Front Page Cup champions. On the road. And in the locker room. what billet life is like, game day production and broadcast, the BCHL All-Star Game festivities, and of course, the playoffs. This and much, much more. These Nation, making hockey history. Today, we will explore game day operations and the broadcast. Hi, I'm Fraser Rogers. I'm the Vice President of Business Operations and the Director of Broadcast and Communications for the Penticton Bees. Game day for me is a busy day. It's all encompassing. Um, starts early and it ends late. I would say in a 24 hour day, you're looking at, for a home game anyways, looking at 16, 17, maybe 18 hours of the day doing a V's game. It starts early, like I said, probably I get up early in the morning around six o'clock, get a coffee at my house, start doing some computer work, some prep for the game, some media relations side of things. And that takes me, you know, until seven-ish in the morning, getting ready, getting my suit prepared, getting myself ready for the day, getting to the rink around eight o'clock. And then from there, from 8 a.m. right through till 11 p.m., I'm doing these stuff uh, for a game day at home. The home games are the busiest uh, uh, besides the away games, you compare the two, but yeah, home games, it's, it starts bright and early, ends late. You know, doing media relations stuff with computer work, game previews, stat printouts, rosters and game charts for media and scouts to getting interviews with the players for the broadcast on radio and on web, and also getting the game operations stuff done with uh, Amanda, who does our game nights. That means all the sponsor duties as well. So coordinating for the game night sponsor to have their table set up, their on ice activation, their announcements and the game script that you see on the video scoreboard. So all that put together makes for a very long day. Um, by the end of it, you're pretty spent. You're probably running on some adrenaline through the game. Once the actual broadcast comes around at seven o'clock, you're already working a 12 hour day. And that's just the start of the broadcast. So it's long and like I said, it's all encompassing, but uh, it's it keeps you busy and makes the days go by quick. and. No day is alike, it's like a snowflake, everyone's different. Even though you're kind of doing the same thing, different things pop up and it makes it interesting. 
Hi, my name is Amanda Liza Herka, and I'm the Director of Ticketing and Merchandise with Penticton Bees. So with Director of Ticketing and Merchandise, uh, my main job is to make sure that I have uh, season tickets, season ticket members in the building. Uh, we have roughly 800 season ticket members uh, with the Bees. And then on top of that, I deal with the merchandise aspect of it as well. Uh, so I run the blue zone, making sure that uh, we see blue all over Penticton. Um, so we actually have sponsors that come in for every game night and we have booths that we set up for them. So I make sure I get into contact with them about uh, what their plan is for the night. So are you going to have a table set up? Uh, are you going to do an on ice activation during the first intermission? Are we going to do a row giveaway? All these things to really help promote what their business and what their brand is and um, their community involvement. Next I meet up with Kyle who's our in-house announcer and I make sure things are planned with him when it comes to real giveaways for our sponsors as well as making sure that the crowds are pumped and ready to go for the night. So Harvey is our Penicton Bees mascot. He's a blue fox and he is the guy that goes out and pumps the crowds as well as Kyle and, and he meets with all of the kids at the beginning of the night. People love seeing Harvey. The Vs really pride themselves on community involvement and when I plan theme nights, I try to make sure I can connect the two. For instance, we have our Pink the Rink night where we invite all of our local elementary schools in and our sponsor gives away uh, a $500 prize to our loudest, proudest school. Planning game nights, especially with a theme, brings a lot of purpose to my job because it connects the Vs with the community and creates an atmosphere that is very powerful and hard to describe. Hi, I'm Andrew Jacobite. I'm responsible for and produce the broadcaster BCHL TV. It's a full production with multiple cameras, plus we have commercials, graphics, play-by-play -play commentary, and eight angles for instant replay. Typically we have 12 cameras, so it's usually three or four operators. Uh, myself who does the, the replays and the graphics and the switching, um, and Fraser Rogers and whoever his sidekick for color commentator is that night uh, to put on the broadcast. Being an avid sports fan and, and seeing a game from behind the camera and, and being able to produce and direct uh, a game is, is a lot of fun. And, and to put that together, uh, we've got some talented people that are around helping us. And, and of course, we have Fraser Rogers uh, calling the game and, and providing uh, words and a story to what's happening. And, and my job is to find those those images when he, especially when there's there's dead time and has to fill stoppages where he has to fill space and and then I have to scramble to find uh, the different replays of, of what just happened and that uh, usually flows pretty good and, and it's a great uh, team effort and it's a lot of fun uh, to put that production together uh, while uh, the game is taking place and, and making sure people have an opportunity to see what's happening uh, uh, with the Penticton Vs. What made me decide to go into broadcasting? That's a good question. Um, I would say when I was early teens, probably about 14 or 15 years old, uh, I knew sports wasn't gonna be a career path for me playing wise, not gonna be professional at any level, at any sport. And I thought, well, one of the best ways to stay involved in sports was it behind the scenes as like an athletic therapist or a trainer, for example, which actually I wanted to be first before I wanted to be a broadcaster always watching like hockey games on TV. I always was interested in what the trainer was doing now, you know, getting sticks or sharpening skates or helping guys in the ice on the medical side. If there's a player injured, I always want to be one of those guys. I thought it was the best seat in the house. You're not a coach, so there's not that pressure, but you're sitting on the bench and you have a, a front row seat to an NHL game. And then I thought, oh, that's a lot of school to get a degree in like kinesiology, for example. So I didn't think that was my avenue. So one of the next best things was being in the media side and having sort of that bird's eye view of sports. And I gravitated towards, you know, hockey first as a, as a broadcast field, uh, but I was open to really any sport, but hockey was, we're in Canada, the, the biggest sport you see on TV all the time. So yeah, when I was 14 or 15, I started gravitating towards focusing on the production side of TV broadcasts. So when kids my age at the time were following the superstar players and what they're doing on the ice, I was kind of sitting there at 15, listening to the play-by-play -play announcer, watching the production, what they did pre-game, what they do going to commercial break, coming out of commercial break, what they do at the intermission, what they talk about, what the broadcasters say, and then I actually got a 
tape recorder. This is how old I am for this generation. I actually got a tape recorder at like e &B Sound and then started recording myself doing mock broadcasts of Vancouver Canuck games on TV. So I turned down Jim Hewson or John Shorthouse on the TV, guys I looked up to, and then I started doing my own play-by-play. -play. And I think my dad and mom still have some cassette tapes of me doing those Canuck broadcasts from my bedroom TV. When I was 15, I had a little 15-inch monitor. It was yeah, a small TV that I inherited from my dad. I think he had in the 80s. I had that in my bedroom watching Canuck games on TV. And then, yeah, ever since then, 15, I started gravitating towards the broadcast side and how did I get involved and how do I get involved to do it? Where do I go? What schooling did I need? And then from there, it kind of took off and I started in my hometown in Nanaimo when I was about 19, right out of high school, by getting into the radio station and from there, working in promotions and events to the news and sports department and then to play-by-play -play broadcasting at the junior B level at the time and work my way up all the way to uh, junior A broadcasting, major junior broadcasting and find myself uh, here in Penticton. To come up with catchphrases, it's more just manipulating, adapting from what other broadcasters have said on TV or on radio in different sports and trying to use them in your own way. Maybe try to change the phrase just enough to make it work in your style. And there are some great ones that everybody likes to say, like a, you know, like a scintillating glove say that Danny Gallivan would always say back in Montreal Canadian broadcasts way back in the 70s and 80s and 60s. I know Spinorama plays that a lot of broadcasters like to use or you know, Chris Cuthbert would always say, did you see that? The broadcaster on Hockey Night in Canada as well and on TSN. So yeah, it's a copycat industry, I think, and you use it in your own way. Yeah, trying to fill your airtime when there's, you know, stoppages, lulls in the game. Hockey, it's, it's a quick game, so the whistles are kind of few and far between, the, and the stoppages are shorter compared to like a football or basketball or even baseball games where you have a lot, a lot of dead moments. But it takes a lot of prep. You have to research both teams, not just the team you work for or the team you cover day in and day out, but the opposition. You have to read up, be well read on them, talk about any anecdotes or storylines that are coming into that game. If Penticton's playing Salmon Arm, you want to know all that interesting storylines you can weave into a broadcast about the Salmon Arm Silverbacks and what they've been doing lately, or a particular player, or a milestone for maybe the organization or the coach. So that's really important as well. And uh, you might only use 1% of it, like I said, uh, but that 1% can be really vital and helps you fill dead air time and helps keep the listener engaged. There's nothing worse than a broadcaster sounding repetitive. That's maybe the industry curse uh, for any broadcaster, the kiss of death, if you will, to be repetitive and not have enough things to talk about, you're probably not gonna have a long career if that's the case. Tonight's my 900th game in junior hockey broadcasting uh, at the junior A or major junior level. Never thought I would uh, be able to say that, and especially at I think at still a relatively young age of 35 years old. Ah, uh, yeah, it feels like I'm old now. It's nice to know that you're doing something right for that long, that you can have that type of longevity and. So to say I've been in and around junior hockey broadcasting for 900 games is something I take a lot of pride in and as well. There's a lot of people behind the scenes that sacrifice a lot to allow me to get to this milestone. It's going to be a special night tonight and uh, I really am thankful that I can do it with the Penticton Bees uh, here against Seminar.